Welcome to the American Chemical Society Chem Club's 10th anniversary party, Chemistry, Hacking Your Taste Buds. Thank you to the clubs participating both here at ACS headquarters and virtually. Congratulations on 10 years. The Chem Club started as a pilot program in 2005 with just 15 clubs. Now there are over 500 clubs in the United States and around the world. During the past decade, chem clubs have participated in a number of activities, including chemistry demonstrations in schools, collecting water samples and data for the global water experiment, sharing recipes for the chem club cookbook, baking countless periodic table cupcakes, and raising thousands of dollars for the Pennies for Pure Water campaign. These are just a handful of the activities that you and other chem clubs have done. And I'm sure the next 10 years will bring even more activities and accomplishments. I hope you've enjoyed your time as Chem Club members and are experiencing chemistry in new and exciting ways. I look forward to many of you contributing to chemistry as you head to college and beyond. It's time to kick off this celebration with a look at the past 10 years from the perspective of students and teachers who have participated in the program. Thank you all for participating. Even if you're not in, interested in chemistry, like some of my friends, they know like they're biology people or they like don't like science at all, but they like coming to Chem Club because we just do a bunch of fun stuff. Like we do a bunch of fun experiments. It's, it's a really fun environment and it's really encouraging and, and you get to know that things are possible. ACS Chem Clubs is a program through the American Chemical Society that provides support and outreach to high school teachers that are trying to mentor a group of kids through chemistry. I first started my chem club because we already had a science club. And having chemistry as a chemistry teacher umbrellaing this science club really brought it to heart that chemistry is the central science. It got us put into an environment where we could learn a lot, and then openly discuss with each other what we were interested in more than anything. So we would meet and just talk chemistry, basically. It's been a great opportunity for students to get involved and to meet other kids from other classes and, and really be a nerd if they want to be a nerd or be a community service person or experience chemistry. I love the informal interaction with the students. I mean, obviously we're being safe, goggles, apron, all that, but it's sort of like, okay, let's try this out, or what do you think about that, or how do you think we can make this better? Typical, by the book, learning, on its own, very valuable. But the experiences that you'll gain on so many different levels, whether it's communication, taking your knowledge to the next level, really appreciating and understanding, and then being able to apply chemistry concepts. That kind of critical knowledge comes from interacting with others. And I feel like Chem Club is an environment where people can do that. You see kids come back, they're like excited about it, and they really get on fire. And then there's a lot of neat things you can start doing, like I said, in the community, in your school. So it's a great way to interact and engage others. Um, and of course, the American Chemical Society provides just a, a great support. I mean, I, I have to say that if it wasn't for that support, I wouldn't have been able to get this off the ground. You know, with the support of that and the continued enthusiasm of the students, it's, it's pretty good. These kids are really impressionable. And if we can get them involved in science and mathematics when they're 14 and 15 years old and keep them on track, boys and girls, we we have a future building there. The American Chemical Society's vision of embracing high schools and high school teachers, students, has really helped to let my students know what chemistry is about and maybe even sway them towards chemistry as adults. Before the chem club, I would have about a few students go into chemistry. I'm seeing a huge increase in my students finding that chemistry is exciting and pursuing it when they go to college. Hi, my name is Sally Mitchell, and I'm a high school chemistry teacher in East Syracuse, New York. I want to shout out to my chem club. And over here we have 
Hi, I'm Matt Hardings. I'm a professor of chemistry at American University here in DC. And today we are going to hack your taste buds. And so we're going to start out a little bit about taste testing. And we have some volunteers from our chem club here in Silver Spring and another one in Montgomery County. Um, what are your names? Uh, Priya Mittu. Mickey Daniel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little taste test here for you. And the chem clubs have a little bit of these uh, products in their kits or uh, in front of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to just let you taste and learn a little bit about the chemistry of taste. So we're going to do sour we picked and bitter. The sour is, so I think that's that one. The sour one is lemons. And the bitter one is just a really um, solution of baking soda and water. I'm going to have you put your little nose clips on. And the nose clips will help to take away flavor. We just want to focus on taste. What I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and take a little bit of it. And I want you to start in the start right at the tip of your tongue. You can take your lemon and try this. And I want you to focus in on the taste. So go ahead and put it in. Then if you need more, you move it to the side along the side. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> along the side of your tongue. And then towards the back. So try that. You put it towards the back. And where do you taste it most sour? Kind of on my left side. On the left side. Can you taste it everywhere sour though? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I don't think I don't think she likes bitter. Can you can you taste bitter all over your tongue? Um, yeah. Is it focused in any one spot? Uh, kind of towards the tip. Kind of towards the tip. Try it towards the back a little oh, bit, maybe a little bit better. Part. Your taste buds do taste all five, <laughs> all five tastes. She does not like bitter here. OK, so what I want you to do is go ahead and put those down right here. And we're going to clear your palate. And to clear your palate, you can drink some water, or you can go ahead and get, so here's your water. And there's a cracker. So what, what, what they're doing right now is they're clearing their taste buds to get all those chemicals out of the little receptors down there so we can do this other experiment. And this is the fun one. What we have here are some blindfolds. And we're going to have them put their blindfolds on as their palates are being cleared of any chemicals on them. And we're going to give them a lifesaver. Now, they do not know which flavor we're giving them. So we're going to, so the audience can see what color we have. We're going to hand it to you, and we're going to keep your nose plugged. And you're going to keep your eyes out of this. Go ahead and put it in your mouth. And what I want you to do is I want you to move it all over your tongue. And oops, I guess we're not using that one. OK, and we're going to try this other one. And I want you to just tell me what taste you have. So there's sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. Move it around. What taste do you taste? Uh, quite frankly, I can't taste much. Can you taste anything? Um, it's kind of sour a little bit, but sweet. Sour? sour and sweet. Now I want you to remove just your nose clip. And what happens now is the back of your throat, you can bring it up through. It's called retronasal. And you're going to now see if you have a different sense of what flavor do you think it is? It is the green um, lime. Oh, wow. You think it's lime? I think it's like green apple. Maybe? OK, so that's what they think. Now they're going to take off their, their um, blindfolds. Now I want you to take it out of your mouth. I want you to look at the color. Now I want you to put it back into your mouth. Taste it again. Move it around. Did you change the flavor? Yes. What do you What do you think it is? Well, now it tastes like grape. Now it tastes like grape. <laughs> <laughs> Did you change? I uh, know, still green apple. Still green apple. Now, in the beginning, could you tell what the flavor was with your nose plugged? No, not at all. Not at all. So this is a really nice activity, and um, in your kits, you should have different kinds of sweet. The sweet would be the sugar. We have the sour, and usually the hydrogen ions, H plus ions, give you that sour taste. 
Salty. Salty is usually sodium ions, but potassium and magnesium ions also give you that salty, but it's a little bit different. Bitter, there's about 36 different bitter compounds. One of them is a base, which is... Yeah, it was like salty. Like a salt, because of the sodium. So she t did taste the salty in the baking soda. And then you've got this umami. Now, no one wanted to try this one, but that's our soy sauce. And that right there has a meaty, savory flavor to it, a uh, taste to it. And um, you get that when you cook tomatoes. You can get that when you cook meats. Um, but the soy sauce has that meaty umami taste to it. So that's really, um, really, thank you very much here. Let's give them a round of applause here. All right, and so here's Matt. And so now we're going to segue into watching a video on sweetness and sugar and how we taste sugar on our tongues. But what makes these foods taste, you know, sweet? To be sweet, a molecule has to have three very specific chemical features that form a triangle of just the right size. Here's how sucrose, or table sugar, fits into the delightfully named sweetness triangle. Scientists have different ways of describing this interaction, but one way is like a hand in a glove. If the molecule in your food or drink and the receptor on your tongue fit together, your brain gets sent an electrical impulse that says, sweet. Excellent, excellent. So we just saw kind of how our tongue recognizes something that's sweet. And there was something very important about that, right? So they talked about the sweetness triangle. And there's lots of different theories on what makes sweetness. But the shape of the molecule is very important. In chemistry, we care a lot about structure and how structure of a molecule leads to its function. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that now. And we're going to talk about how we can use those things to try to start hacking your taste buds. OK, so we have another volunteer coming on up. Yay. Can you say your name and where you are from? I'm Dr. Rock, and I'm from Springbrook High School. All right, all right. So. What we are going to do now is, is we are going to have a little bit of fun with something called a miracle berry. OK, and so miracle berries change the way that you taste. This is our first demonstration of how we hack our taste buds. But before we hack our taste buds, we're going to have a little taste of lemon. And we're going to see how this goes. You want me to I want you to taste that lemon. The sacrifices. I know, I know. OK, that's good enough. Thank you. OK, right. now, now <laughs> it, it, describe that feeling in words other than ugh and mm. All those, those were very good. It's kind of sharp and sour and yellow. Sharp and sour and yellow. OK, so now we're going to try something called a miracle berry. And, and a miracle berry comes in these little pill forms, and you have them in your packets at your chem clubs. Uh, this. This, uh, this little pill has a protein in it called miraculin. And miraculin is a protein that will, that will coat your mouth and will coat the taste buds in your mouth. And so we're going to use that while, while we're up here letting this miracle berry soak into our tongue. We're going to talk a little bit about how our taste buds and taste receptors work. OK. Also in your packets. We have these cutout hand shapes, all right? And we are using these to kind of show you what a protein receptor, one of your taste receptors on your taste buds, what they kind of look like and how they operate. So we have a couple different ones up here. And when you do this activity uh, in your chem clubs, we want you to try all of the different hand cutouts. And you can use gloves with this if you want to. But we want you to find out which of these cutouts or which of these gloves work the best for you. OK. So Sally is going to tell us what works best for her. I am an A. So here you go. Sally is an A. And I've done this already, and I am a B. I'm very bitter. But Sally is sweet. Isn't she sweet? So Sally is sweet, OK? And, and Sally is sweet because her hand fits into the receptor for the sweet molecule. If this is the protein that 
that says, hey, I'm sweet when something comes around, right? Sally's hand perfectly fits into this. And when a molecule perfectly fits into a protein receptor, that protein receptor will tell your tongue, which tells your nervous system, which tells your brain, hey, I've got some sugar in here. This is really good. We should eat some more now, OK? So, so that's kind of how these protein receptors work, right? They use the shape of the molecule to tell you when a, a certain flavor is around. OK. And so now that we've kind of talked about that, now we're going to get into our miracle berries and what's going on up here. OK. So the miracle ber berry, like I said before, has a protein in it called miraculin. And miraculin coats your tongue. And it coats the flavor receptors, the taste receptors on your tongue. So can you describe to me what your tongue feels like right now? Well, the miracle berry tastes a little sweet. Yeah. A little sweet. OK, nothing. Very mild. Very mild. All right. So, so now that we've done that, I would like you to have some more of this lemon. She's nervous about this. OK, so go ahead and, and, and taste the lemon. And let's see. So we're not, we're not getting the blah and ugh anymore. Now we're getting something else. This is really good. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> do you so, have any more? Yeah, we do have more. We do have more. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, Dr. Rock, can you tell us what, what, what are you, can you describe what you're tasting now? It's sweet. It's sweet. It's sweet. It still tastes lemony, but it's um, kind of like lemonade, like sweet lemonade. That's right. So it tastes sweet, right? So she's starting to taste sweet now, right? So, what the miraculin does and, and how it works, right, is it coats all of those protein receptors on your taste bud. But when you eat something that's sour, and Sally told us earlier that sour contains lots of protons, lots of H plus, all right, that those a that acid removes the miraculin from your sweet receptor. And so when you taste it, all of your other res taste receptors are blocked except for your sweet receptor. So you're naturally tasting all the sweetness that's there in the lemon, right? And so again, if we use our, the, this protein glove as our model, and I am going to be miraculin, if miraculin is covering up your protein receptor, when acid comes along, right, it will move it away, and now we can taste sweet again. But we can't really taste anything else because they're still all blocked up. OK. So thank you. Let, let's give Dr. Rock a big hand. Okay. So that's one way we can hack our taste buds. So we're hacking our taste buds with miracle berries. Another way you can hack your taste bud is with toothpaste. And we're going to watch a video on how we can do that. What is it about toothpaste that transforms a sweet flavor of orange juice into something so atrociously bitter? Well, to get to the bottom of this phenomenon, we're going to have to cover a couple of bases here, folks. And the first one is a sense of taste. Your mouth is a powerful chemical sensor equipped with around 10,000 individual taste buds, with up to 100 individual taste receptor cells each. These taste buds are specifically programmed to detect five different types of taste. Sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami. Taste is a chemical matching game of sorts. You see, when you eat a piece of food, it distributes molecules and ions with specific shapes throughout your mouth. Each taste receptor cell is designed to match up with a specific molecule and ignore all others. Although this matching game is pretty accurate, there are other factors that can affect the way your mouth interacts with taste molecules. Okay, so that's enough for taste now. Let's talk about toothpaste. Now you see, in the average tube of toothpaste, you're going to find four primary ingredients. Water, which adds body to the paste, abrasives, which help remove plaque from teeth, fluoride, which helps prevent cavities, and detergents, the components that foam up when brushing. The most commonly used detergent in toothpaste is a compound called sodium lauryl sulfate, or SLS for short. SLS is used in tons of different household products, and although SLS works wonders in producing suds, it has been noted for its strange effects on our mouth's ability to taste. As it turns out, SLS suppresses our sweet receptors and destroys compounds in our mouths, called phospholipids, which inhibit our bitterness receptors. This opens up a clear pathway for bitter molecules to reach your receptors. This is the most widely accepted explanation for why orange juice turns from this to this, after brushing your teeth. Orange juice and toothpaste, ew. 
So let's change it over to something that I really like, chocolate. And what I really like is the really dark, dark chocolate. And there's different crystal structures that chocolate can have. And one of them we call tempered chocolate. So I have Matt up here. He's going to be my um, experimenter here. He's going to take out a piece of dark, special chocolate. And he's going to show you what happens with it. And you can hear it, and you can feel it in your mouth when you crunch down on it. Now, does that melt in your hand? No. It just kind of stays the way it is. OK, now I took the same type of candy bar, and I put it in my oven. And I baked it, just like you would bake a chocolate chip cookie with the chocolate chips in it. So I baked them, and then I let them refreeze. And now the chocolate is gooey. Do you see that? Now put it in your hand and see if it melts. And Matt's moving it around. Yeah, it's crumbly and kind of messy in my hand. The other one wasn't so much. Okay, and there is a big taste difference. So what I'm going to have Matt do is we're going to start with the tempered chocolate. When you eat chocolate, most of you don't eat it correctly. Put it in your mouth, just a small piece. Now let it warm up to your body temperature because it doesn't melt in your hand because your outside body temperature is a little bit less than the inside temperature. Now move it around your mouth. What do you taste? Mm, it tastes very chocolatey. It's delicious. A little bitter, a little sweet, but mostly chocolatey. It tastes like chocolate. Okay, so but not too sweet. That's right. So now he's going to try the untempered chocolate just like he's baked it in the oven. And he's going to do the same thing. Now, this one's going to get messy in his hands. He's going to put it in his mouth. He's going to let it melt. It's already melted. What do you taste? It's cloyingly sweet. It's very sweet, much sweeter than the other chocolate. And yet, it's the same chocolate bar, just in a different crystalline form. So I've kind of hacked your taste buds, didn't I? I've been hacked. <laughs> so if you've got some chocolate chip cookies, you can try the chocolate chips before you bake them, then take your cookie, of course, break it in half, and what you would have is a nice chocolate chip there, and then what you can do is taste that, and you can do the same thing that Matt and I did up here. So chocolate chip cookies, pizza, all of those are great. So now we're going to see a video on chocolate chip cookies. Everyone loves chocolate chip cookies, but we all enjoy them in different ways. And let's not even get started on nuts. But how can you get your cookies to turn out just the way you like them? Well, you play with the recipe, changing up the ingredients, manipulating your technique. Hey, that kind of sounds like science. Baking has a ton of chemistry going on, but let's start with chewiness. A cookie's chewiness comes from gluten that forms when you mix flour and water. For extra chewy cookies, use bread flour instead of all-purpose flour. Bread flour has more protein, which helps with the gluten development. So, say you like a cookie with more complex flavors, well, turn up that heat. When you bake your cookies at 375 degrees Fahrenheit instead of the typical 350, sugar breaks down at a process called caramelization. This reaction pleases your tongue by producing molecules with butterscotch, rum, and nut flavors. For a fluffier cookie, add some good old sodium bicarbonate, more commonly known as baking soda. Baking soda breaks down in the oven, creating carbon dioxide gas bubbles, which keeps your cookie from getting too dense. Excellent, excellent. Well, we all love chocolate chip cookies. Um, and I, I hope everyone out there has had a good time watching along. Sally and I, in just a few minutes, are going to start answering questions. Hopefully, some of you have been uh, putting your questions out on social media. But we also want to see any pictures that you've been taking. So if you've been taking pictures, uh, if you take pictures while you're doing some of these activities, right, we want you to tag them with the ACS Chem Club hashtag and the Chem Club 10 hashtag. Right? So we want to see them. We want to see you guys having fun with all of your chemistry and, and, and hacking your taste buds. And thank you. And um, for those of you who are seeing this video who, uh, who may not be in a chem club, if you're, if you're watching this video and you're not in a chem club, we have all sorts of information online on how to j start your own chem club. And there's lots of resources and lots of other videos like this one and events like this one that you can play along with and have a lot of fun and, and learn a little bit of chemistry. All right, we also want to thank a lot of the people who have
put in so much work to make this uh, this event possible. Uh, lots of people have done uh, lots of things to, to really make it make it go well. And I hope you guys are enjoying your activities at home. And I hope you guys here are going to enjoy them in a little bit as well. Um, but really, we just want you to go forth in science, right? We want you to go and have fun, play around with chemistry, play around with cooking, do some chemistry on your food, do some food on your chemistry, and go hack your taste buds. Thank you.